and short-lived. They are joy, shallow, and short-lived. Number two, they are wealth, temporary. That's why it says, it'll be like the grass. It will soon be munched down. It will soon be caught down. Their wealth is temporary. Their glory is a fading glory. It will fade away. You see them now, and then later, you cannot find them anymore. His happiness is skin deep. His happiness is not deep in the heart. His happiness when he takes his wine, when he holds his bottle, his happiness when he seems to have his way is uh, superficial and it is skin deep. His confidence is deceptive. You find some, you know, some of these wicked people, it's like they don't think there's any judgment. They don't think there's any retribution. They don't think there's anything that is going to happen to them because they appear powerful and mighty. It appears they're in authority and they feel that they are all in all. But you know, that kind of deception is, uh, that kind of confidence is deceptive. The life is a delusion. It's illusionary. It's like a mirage. You see them, to, it's like everything is all right. What's a mirage? A mirage is, uh, you know, you're going on a journey journey and then you look afar it is like there is a pool there's water ahead of you it happens generally on the road sometimes in the desert but that's the life of the wicked and his future is frightening his future is frightening that's the reason the lord is saying we shouldn't envy them the wicked man is to be pitied not to be envied the wicked man is to be pitied while not envying them. The seemingly good life, the goodness of God upon him seemingly should lead him to repentance. If it doesn't lead him to repentance, it will lead him to retribution. That's why it says, look away from that wicked man. Look, look away from their riches. Look away from their wealth. And look away from their boldness and self-confidence. Because there is nothing to it. Put your trust in God. Put your confidence in God. He cares for his own. You will trust the Lord. Uh, let us look at this. Uh, I've read to you verses uh, 1 and 2 of some, of some 37. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 and verse 8. Rest in the Lord and, uh, and wait patiently for him. It says, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, his dubious way, his fraudulent way, his way of stealing, his way of uh, grabbing this and grabbing that, his way of evil. And he appears to be prospering because of the man that bringeth wicked devices uh, to pass. Cease from anger, in verse 8, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Don't say, okay, if that's how to be rich in this country, I'll join them. If that's what to do to have all the wealth coming to these wicked people and these fraudulent people and these people that will steal from every individual and steal from their offices and steal from the government and steal from everywhere. Is if that's the way to get rich, okay, I will join the game. She says no. Don't copy them and don't fret yourself uh, because of those who are wise to do evil. It tells us in verse 9, look at verse 9, uh, for evil doers shall be cut off. It's still telling us there is the same reason why we shouldn't fret. And then it says, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. I thought somebody would say, Amen. Amen. For yet, for yet a little while, for yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and uh, it shall not be. It's saying because it's temporary. What you think they have, what they seem to have, and because they'll soon be cut off, that's why it says you don't fret because of them. Look at verse 12. The wicked plotted against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The day of retribution, the day of recompense, the day of judgment, the day of sorrow, the day of pain, the day of perdition is coming. That's the reason why you don't fret concerning them. Look at verse 14. The wicked have drawn out the sword 
and abate their bow, to cast down the poor and the needy, and to slay such as uh, be of upright composition. Their sword shall enter into their own heart. And their bows shall be broken. That's why he's saying, if you think they're powerful and they devise wicked means, they are boastful and they say, I'll do this, I'll do that. He says, but they cannot because all that bow and all that arrow they are trying to apply will get to their own heart and you will still be alive in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17. It says, for the, uh, for the arms of the wicked shall be broken. Why would you fret about them? Oh, you worry about them. Why would you envy them? Since we know the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. It tells us in verse 20, it says, But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as a fat of lambs. They shall consume in the fire and into smoke shall they consume away. It tells us in verse 35 and verse 36. Look at verse 35. In verse, 30, in verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power. Have you seen the wicked in great power? Sometimes you wonder, maybe they're into occultism, maybe into, they're, they're into Satan worship, maybe they're, they're into false worship, maybe they're into powers of darkness, and it appears they're able to get this and get this and get that, and it's uh, you stay there. You're calling on the name of Jesus, you're calling on the name of uh, you know, Almighty God, the God of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you know, I'm following this other negative way, and see me is just for a short time. I said it's for a short time. That's why it says in verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading, spreading himself like a green bay tree. Look at verse 30, yet he passeth away, yet he passeth away, and lo, he was not, yea, I sought him, but could not, he could not be found. And then it tells us in verse 38, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. And so, as he tells us the a kind of a proposition in verses 1 and 2, and then in the other verses up to verse 7, and then he elaborates on it the rest of the chapter, elaborates on it that we should not fret about those people. We're looking at Job chapter 20. Job chapter 20. What are reading from verse 5? Job chapter 20. Reading from verse 5, the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite for a moment. The joy of the hypocrite, those are hypocritical, they do not know the Lord, and it appears they have this, they have this, because you don't know their age, because you don't know what's going to happen to them, that's why you are fretting about them. Look away from them and look at your God. He will supply all your needs in glory by Christ Jesus. He will satisfy you. He will fulfill the desires of your heart. Uh, let's look at uh, verse uh, 23. In that uh, same chapter, in verse 23, when it's about to fill his belly, God ca shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. That's why you are not afraid about them. The future is dark. And their sustainers is uncertain. And the evil, the judgment that shall come upon them is incalculable. And because of that, it says, fret not at them, at the wicked. Fret not at them, at the unrighteous. Fret, fret not at them, at the fraudulent. Because when he shall try to fill his belly, the fury of the Lord and the wrath of the Lord shall come upon him. And shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Let's look at chapter 21. Job chapter 21. Reading here from verse 7. Job chapter 21 verse 7. Wherefore do the wicked live become old yea and mighty in power. Here before um, Job actually understood he said look at what is happening to me. 
and look at the things I've lost and look at all the reverses that came upon me. If you look at verse 1, it's, you'll see it is for Job, but Job answered and said, this is Job himself talking and then look at verse 8, it says I'm wondering, their seed is established in the sight was in their sight of them and their offspring before their eyes, their houses are saved from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Here Job was it's like he was complaining. It was he was fretting. It's like he was confused. He said I love the Lord. Even the Lord can testify about me. I'm following after the Lord. Even the Lord can testify about me that he was a perfect man in all these ways and he was serving God in all sincerity and all these other things happened to him and now he looked at the wicked and said I can't see that in the world. Look at verse 10 they are bold, genderous, and faileth not, and they are, and they are cow, calveth, and uh, casteth not their calf. And then eventually he goes on and on. Uh, eventually he saw that uh, judgment was coming speedily upon them. Look at verse 19. In verse, uh, look at verse 18. Uh, they are as trouble before the wind, and as chaff that the storm carries away. It says, God lays up his iniquity for his uh, children and he rewardeth him uh, and uh, he knew and uh, he shall know it. His eyes shall see his destruction and he shall drink uh, of the wrath of the Almighty. Look at verse 30 here. And then in verse 30, it tells us that the wicked is reserved for the day of destruction. I pray that will not happen to you. Amen. The wicked is reserved for the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. That's what the Lord is telling us that we're not to envy the wicked. When you envy the wicked, it weakens your hand. It weakens your consecration. It turns your mind away from the Lord. As you're looking at the wicked, look how they're progressing. Look how they're getting on. Look at what they're having. Look at what they possess. Here am I. I am serving the Lord. Here am I. I'm walking for the Lord. Here am I. I'm consecrated to the Lord. Here am I. I'm yielded to the Lord. And then you begin to compare yourself with them. You cannot do the comparison. They are in the broad way. You are in the narrow way. They are going to their own position. You are going to heaven. Somebody, they are going to heaven. And because our ways are different, our destinations are different, we don't think about them. You don't even look at them at all, whatever they have. Because you have salvation, you have more than them. You have holiness, you have more than them. You have the promises of God, you have more than them. You have heaven, you have more than them. You have Christ who supplies all your need, you have more than them. You have joy unspeakable, you have more than them. And you have provision coming from the fountain that never runs dry. You have more than them. There's no comparison at all. Let's see what happens to a child of God when he begins to fret, when he begins to look at those people as to what they have. We're looking at Psalm 73. I'm reading from verse 2. It says, but as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious at the foolish. It says, you know, a time came in my life, the psalmist was saying, I looked at my life, I looked at their lives. I looked at my family, I looked at their family. I looked at my prospects, at my business. I looked at their business and prospects. I looked at my possession. I looked at their possession. And then he said in verse 2, I almost fell. My steps almost lived. I almost lost my relationship with God. I almost lost my confidence in the Lord. Why? For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said, I envied them when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Look at verse 12. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. He says, I'm looking at the market and I see the people. They seem to prosper, but they're wicked. 
I look at our offices. They seem to be getting promotion. They were promoted last year. And the promotion has come again. And these are the wicked people. They are lazy. They are idle. They are not working. They know how to dodge responsibility. And yet they are the people who are getting the best in this office. He says, Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of the children of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. As I looked at these men, I looked at these women, you know, we are meticulous about holiness, about righteousness, about no bribery, about no corruption, about uh, not going the evil way, about not seeking after idols, about no occultism. We're meticulous in our ways. If they want to give us anything, we're looking at the source, whether the source is right and not right, and yet, look at where we are. We believe in holiness, we believe in eternal life, we believe in heaven, and look at where we are. Yeah. And he said, when I thought to know about this, I was perplexed. I couldn't understand. And then he goes on to tell us there in verse 16, when I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Verse 17, until, until, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Thank God you have come, you will understand. The Lord will open your eyes. He'll open your mind. Now you will understand. You have been saying, oh, poor me. No, not poor you. Unfortunate me. No, you are not unfortunate. Look at my condition. Your condition is better than your thought. Because your future is bright. But he said, now I understood. Look at it now in verse 18. Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. And thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, it says, And they are utterly consumed with terror. As a dream, when one awaketh, uh, So, O Lord, when thou awakest, Thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was great and i was preached in my reins so foolish was i to ever look at the wicked so foolish was i to ever fret at the wicked so foolish was i he ignorant was i and ignorant i was in as a beast before thee nevertheless i am continually was the it says now i recover my consecration now i know their end i don't envy them anymore i'm not jealous over them anymore and i'm not fretting anymore it says nevertheless i am continually with thee thou hast holding me by thy right hand thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. Somebody said, Amen. Amen. I pray the Lord will open our eyes the more. We'll not be envious at anyone in Jesus' name. Point number two, confidence in the faithfulness of God. We're looking at Psalm 37, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good so shall thou be fed shall thou dwell in the land verily thou shalt be fed delight thyself also in the lord and he shall give thee the the desires of thine heart and then commit thy way unto the lord trust also in him and it shall bring it to pass he shall bring it to pass those promises you are holding on to they will soon be fulfilled. Because the Lord will bring everything to pass in Jesus' name. Now, we're talking about having confidence in the Lord. And the question is, how do I have confidence in the Lord? 
he tells us here in this passage how to have confidence in the Lord. And then he tells us the passage, when we have confidence in the Lord, what's the result? What's the result? Anyone having confidence in the Lord, whosoever that may be, old or young man or woman, a child of God, a minister of the gospel, he says, when we have confidence in the Lord, this is what will happen. And he mixes everything up because he says, have confidence in the Lord, and this is what you do, and this will be the confidence. Let me look at it one by one. Number one, trust in the Lord. Number one, trust in the Lord. Number two, and do good. And do good. You see, if you kind of hold back, I've done all the good, I can't see the result. I've done all the sowing, I can't see the reaping. I've done all the good things he told me to do. I can't see the response of the people. I can't see the result from the people. You stop doing good. And then it shows that you don't have confidence in the Lord anymore. You have confidence in the Lord. Number one, trust in the Lord. You have confidence in the Lord. Keep on doing good and do good. Number three, and dwell in the land. You have confidence in the Lord. Stay where you are. You see, there are people, I mean, believer i trust the lord i'm holding on to the lord i depend upon the promises of the lord but they don't dwell in the land they run away they run away look at this condition here look at this situation here and look at all the commotion here and look at the insecurity here they don't believe that the lord will keep them they don't believe that the lord will watch over them they don't believe the lord is my shepherd i shall not want therefore they're making they're always checking up on the internet where can i go where can i easily get visa and they run away they don't have conference in the lord because they're trying to escape what they think is dangerous and they leave the work of the lord the lord has given to them they leave that behind it says if you have confidence in the lord number three you will dwell in the land i will dwell in the land number four verily thou shalt be fed it says verily without any shadow of doubt you have confidence in the lord and you do all these things to show that you really have confidence in the lord it says there is no doubt it will satisfy you it will supply your need you will not lack in jesus name Number five, it is to delight thyself in the Lord. It says, this will be your joy. This will be your joy. I was glad what they said unto me. Let us go to the house of the Lord. In everything that concerns the Lord, I have a job, I have a promotion, I have a farm, I have a land, I have a house. I delight in the Lord. He will take care of the rest. Every minute you spend in the presence of the Lord, the Lord will restore to you a hundredfold in Jesus' name. It says give and it shall be given unto you. It's not just money. Give your time and it shall be given back to you. Give your effort, it shall be given back to you. Give your fruit, it shall be given back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men put your bosom. I want to assure you today, every time, every moment you spend in the presence of God, as you are here tonight, it's going on record. Because you delight yourself in the Lord, he will delight in you. Blessings will be coming from here, from there, from everywhere. You turn to the left, blessing will meet you. You turn to the right, blessing will meet you. Because you delight in the Lord. Number six, it shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It shall give thee the desires of thine heart. If you desire small, you get small. If you desire big, you get big. If you desire high, you get high. If you desire spiritual, you'll have spiritual. If you desire material, you'll have material. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Now, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. If you really have confidence in the Lord, you will, you will not run ahead of him. You will not say, well, I'll, I'll think of what to do on this. I'll go my way in this. If you really have confidence in the Lord, this is what it means. You commit your way unto the Lord. And then, number eight, he will bring it to pass. I said he'll bring it to pass. He will surround you with abundance. He'll surround you with blessing. And will say, 
That is the man that has confidence. God, that is the woman that has confidence in the Lord. All these things the Lord will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. One by one, very quickly, very quickly. Look at some 37, verse 3. The first part, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, and we're looking at uh, verse 5. Trust in the Lord. How? With all thine heart. With all thine heart. Don't let any part of you have doubt, reservation, and thinking, am I sure the Lord will do this? We're talking about marriage. Am I sure the Lord will do this? We're talking about having miracle children. Am I sure the Lord will do this? We're talking about job in this moment of scarcity. Am I sure the Lord will do this? We're talking about retaining your job in this time of recession. Am I sure the Lord will do this? Don't have any doubt. Don't have any unbelief. The man that has faith in God and trust in God, all shall be well. I said all shall be well. Look at that verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. He'll direct you to where that job is. He'll direct you to where that supply is. He'll supply, he'll supply all your need and direct you to that place. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy neighbor and marrow unto thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits and all thine increase. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty. Prosperity is coming your way. Abundance coming your way, and thy praises shall burst out with new wine. Number two, and do good. Let's come back to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. What is in the next line in verse 3? The next line in verse 3 tells us, uh, it tells us about uh, what we are to do. If we really trust in the Lord and do good, and do good, and do good. And what's the greatest good you can do? What you are doing already. You are teaching other people. You are helping other people. Those who are discouraged, you are lifting them up. Those who are sinners, you are showing them Calvary. And those who are away from the Lord, you are running after them. You are driving them and bringing them to the Lord. And those who are downtrodden, you know, you are giving a helping hand. You are giving them some verses of scripture. And those who are crying, you are wiping away their tears. And those who have lost their way, you are we're telling them this is the way. What key they're in. That's the good you can do. And as you do that good, and you bring them to the Lord, I pray the Lord himself will do good in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 10. Galatians chapter 6, and we're reading here from verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity what opportunity in our office opportunity in the market opportunity in our neighborhood opportunity in our schools opportunity in our colleges as we therefore have opportunity let us do good unto all men they don't have salvation let us do good unto all men show them reveal to them tell them this is the way the way to eternal life life eternal let us good do good to all men especially unto them who are the household of faith. If we really have faith in God and we trust the Lord and we have confidence in the Lord, you'll not stop doing good. You'll keep on doing good. I'll keep on doing good. I said I'll keep on doing good. I helped him before. I burnt my fingers. I sought after him. He sent the dog after me. And I tried to do this and tried to do that. And what was their response? How did they reciprocate? They almost hurt me and, uh, you know, beat life out of me. And therefore, I'll stop. That's not confidence in God. Confidence in the Lord is, I'll keep on doing good. Somebody there, I'll keep on doing good. You'll do it and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. We're coming back to Psalm 37, verse 3. It says, uh, so shall that dwell in the land. Dwell in the land. Uh, you see at uh, this time now, uh, when you, you know, you call a friend and the friend says, 
nice to call me. I forgot to tell you, I'm, you know, out of this place within uh, one month. What do you mean I'm checking out of this place? I cannot stay in this place anymore. And then he says, you know, I can show you how to also get out because everybody is running away. Do you know that? They're running away from here. They're running away from there. And I want to tell you how you can get out as well. You say, no, thank you very much. I'm dwelling in the land. Somebody there, I'm dwelling in the land. Dwell in the land. Dwell in the land. This is the place of blessing. I said, this is the place of your blessing. We're looking at Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26. Here is where the Lord will bless you. Here is where the Lord will prosper you. You stay at your duty post. You are not running away because other people are running away. They don't have confidence in the Lord. That's why they're running away. But here you dwell in the land. Here you dwell in the land. I dwell in the land. Say it out aloud. I dwell in this land. Genesis chapter 26, I'm reading here from verse 2. Genesis chapter 26 verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Dwell in the land. Abide there. Uh, what will happen? So John in this land. Verse 3. And I will be with thee. And I will be with thee. And will bless thee. And will bless thee. When you think about it, anywhere God says, I'll bless you, that's what you'll say. Anywhere God says, I'll satisfy you, that's where to stay. Anywhere God says, your blessing, I reserve it. Don't go to Egypt, don't go to that other place. Here is where you are to dwell. And then he says, I'll bless you. Look at uh, verse 4. And I will make thy seed multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed somebody said amen, amen. look at verse 6 and I see dwelt in the land he dwelt in Gerar. You see, the Lord had said, abide there, stay there, dwell there. And I see said, thank you, Lord. I trust you. I have confidence in you. I'm not going to have an alternative plan. That thing you have told me is what I'm going to do. And he dwelt there. And let's look now at verse 12. Look at verse 12. Then I seek so in that land, in that land, in this land, you will sow. In this land, you will walk. Because he said, dwell there, and you're obedient to him. It says, then Isaac, Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year. Tell me by yourself. Tell me by yourself. Say it for yourself. And hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. That's what he said. And the Lord blessed him. Psalm 37, verse 3. And verily thou shalt be fed. Verily thou shalt be fed. The Lord will feed you. Look at verse 19. Verse 19. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. This evil time, you'll not be ashamed. This time of famine, you'll not be ashamed. At this time of recession, you will not be ashamed. It says they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. In the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Psalm 34, verses 9 and 10. O fear the Lord, ye he says, for there is no want, there is no lack, uh, there is no scarcity to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger but they but uh, but they that seek the lord shall not lack shall not want shall not miss any good thing are you still there yeah. i said are you still there yeah. now i come to psalm 37 and we're looking at verse 4 delight thyself in the lord delight thyself also in the lord it says this ought to have confidence in the lord the people that say i have confidence in the lord they're sitting at home 
The people that say have confidence in the Lord, they are acting like orphans. The people that say have confidence in the Lord, when the people of God get together to do this and do this and do that, they are nowhere to be found. And when we're to study the word of God, lean upon the Lord, upon the word of the Lord, it's like, you know, they come to a place of mourning. They're not happy. They're not joyful. They're looking at the time they're spending. When are we going to finish this? When are we going to finish that? They don't delight in the Lord. But thank, thank God for people like you. I said thank God for people like you. Anybody delighting in the Lord there? Of course, of course. That's why you are here. The Lord will bless you. Look at Psalm 1. Psalm 1. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. Here is how to delight in the Lord. We delight in his word. It says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law. Does he meditate day and night? It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leave also shall not wither. His leave also shall not wither. You will not wither. You will not dry up. Day by day, as your days show, so shall your strength and fullfulness and greenness be in Jesus' name. The latter part of verse 3. Read it for yourself. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever, you know, it's wonderful to dwell in this land. You dwell in the land and look at this. Just delight in the Lord. And it's going to fulfill promises in your life in Jesus' name. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. We're coming back to Psalm 37. And we're looking at the second part of verse 4. It says, and it shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It shall give thee the desires of thine heart. It will answer your prayer. You know some people, they say, he never answers my prayer. I pray and fast. I never get anything. I always get. I said, I always get. You say it, you have it. You believe it, you receive it. It is what you say. It's because you have been saying, I never make it. Change your language from today. I'll make it. I'll receive. I delight in the Lord. He will prosper me. I delight in him. He will give me the desires of my heart. Look at that, verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. In First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14, First John chapter 5, verse 14, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear, he hear us, whatsoever, whatsoever, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. We come back to Psalm 37. I'm reading from verse 5. In verse 5 it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. Commit thy way unto the Lord. The work you're doing, commit that to the Lord. Your family, commit that to the Lord. Your projects, commit that to the Lord. And all your desires and aspirations, commit that to the Lord. All that you're seeking after, commit that to the Lord. And the Lord will do what is good in your life in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 16, we're looking at verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord. And thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works unto the Lord. The work of your hand. Give it to the Lord. And let the work, work, Lord, work along with you. And let the Lord's power and the Lord's promises work along with you. As you commit that thing unto the Lord. Now we come to Psalm 35 verse 5. And it says, and it shall bring it to pass. And it shall bring it to pass. Between now and next week. You will have something. That you have been running after. And saying I want. I want. 
it is going to happen. I said it is going to happen. And between now and that time, there's no anxiety and there's no sorrow and there's no fretting. And then as you move on, he'll fulfill the desires of my heart. He'll fulfill the desires of my heart. Because he says in this verse 5, and it shall bring it to pass. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, we're looking at verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 11. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper me, it shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. It will prosper in your life. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well. For I will hasten my word to perform it. Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12. I will read him from verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse, tell me the verse. Verse 25. For I, the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more delayed, no more prolonged. For in your days, O house of Israel, will I say the word, and will perform it, says the Lord God. A performance is coming your way. A fulfillment is coming your way. Number one, caution against fretting over the godless. Number two, confidence in the faithfulness of God. Number three, compensation for the faithful and the godly. We're coming to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, we're looking at verse 6. It says in verse 6, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the known day. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Something good is about to happen. The blessings of the Lord is about to give you. Untold blessings of the Lord. Have faith in God. Trust him and put your confidence in him. His promises are sure for you and for the people you are concerned about. He saves, he supplies our needs, he keeps, he is faithful. He will not forget his own. He will not forget you. Be faithful, remain godly, do his will, abide in his word, and trust also in his word. Numbers, in Numbers chapter 23, Numbers chapter 23, our God is faithful. And you'll find his faithfulness will work positively in a practical way in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, as he said, and shall he not do it? Or as he spoke in, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he has blessed you. I said he has blessed you. And I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He has, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely, there is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no occultism against you. There is no magic against you. There is no stronghold against you. There is no evil power against you. Neither there shall be any divination against Israel or against you. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel and of you, what God 
has wrought. What God has done. The time of abundance has come. And the time of blessing has now come. Trust in the Lord. I said trust in the Lord. I said trust in the Lord. The Lord will embarrass you with miracles. Surprise you with signs and wonders. And great will be your testimony in Jesus name. Rise up and claim your blessing. Rise up and claim your blessing. It's yours. It's yours. Don't you see what he has told us? He says, let's have confidence in the Lord. In times like these, have confidence in the Lord. At such a time as this. Time of recession. Time of famine. Time of sorrow. Time of scarcity. Time of joblessness. That's the time to trust in the Lord. That's the time to have confidence in the Lord. And the Lord will bring it to pass. Keep on doing good. Keep on doing good. Keep on doing good. Don't say, ah, it's all over. It's all over. I can't preach anymore. It's all over. I can't evangelize anymore. It's all over. I can't help anybody anymore. It's all over. See my condition. See my condition. That condition is going to change. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Confidence in the Lord. Confidence in the Lord. Do what in the land. Don't run away. Anywhere you go, if God is not there with you, what are you going to get? Trust in the Lord. Have confidence in him. And he will bring it to pass. And he will bring it to pass. He'll fulfill his promise. He cannot fail. He will not fail. Put your heart before the Lord. You have a right to be happy. You have a right to be joyful. You have a right to be expectant. Servant of God, minister of God, preachers of the gospel, leaders in the church, workers in the church. You have a right to be blessed. He'll bless you. That's what he said. He'll supply your need. That's what he said. He'll fulfill the desires of you. That's what he said. Trust him. Don't envy the wicked. Don't envy the sinners. Don't envy the unbelievers. You have Christ, you have all. You have God, you have all. You have the Spirit of God, you have all. You have the promises of God, you have all. The Lord is good to all that call upon him. And he will fulfill the desires of their heart. He supply all their needs. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There's no disappointment in God. No disappointment in God. He knows your need. He knows your desires. He hears your prayer. He knows your request. Trust him. Believe in him. And let him fulfill his promises. Commit yourself to the Lord. Commit your way unto the Lord. Commit your works unto the Lord. Your responsibility in the household of faith, commit to the Lord. Your responsibilities in the house of God, commit unto the Lord. Renew your consecration. Renew your commitment. Renew your devotion. Your dedication unto the Lord. And say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. 
Lay everything back on the altar. And with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, trust him. He cannot fail. He will not fail. Trust him. Lean on him. Rely on him. And it will bring it to pass. Don't stop preaching. Do good. Don't stop praying. Do good. Don't stop following up. Do good. Don't stop evangelizing. Do good. Don't stop developing the believers. Do good. Don't stop your involvement in the work of the house of God. Do good. Don't stop giving. Do good. And he has promised to will bless. And he cannot fail. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. Trust him. Trust in the Lord. And do good. Dwell thou in the land. Don't run to the village. Don't run overseas. Dwell. Abide in the land. Thou shalt be fed. Thou shalt be satisfied. And delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself in the word of the Lord. And in the work of the Lord. In the ways of the Lord. Delight yourself in the will of the Lord. Happy, joyful, excited, enthusiastic, while serving the Lord. And then he'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit yourself totally and reservedly unto him. Have confidence in the Lord. More and more, day by day, confidence in the Lord. And it shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring it to pass. That promise, he shall bring it to pass. That desire, he shall bring it to pass. That expectation, he shall bring it to pass. That aspiration, he shall bring it to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Excited people of God, enthusiastic people of God, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Something definite will happen. Yeah. A definite promise will be fulfilled. Yeah. Something definite. That the Lord brings upon your life in Jesus' name. I believe. I believe. I believe. As you believe, you'll see the glory of God in your life. You see that glory in your family. You see that glory in your place of war. Rest up those sons. Father, in Jesus' name, we glorify you. We thank you. Because at such a time as this, 
we can have confidence in you. You are faithful God. You have never failed anyone that trusted you. I will trust in you today. You will not fail us. There's no brother here who will be disappointed. No sister here will be disappointed. All your people everywhere, as we lift our hearts, our voices unto you, satisfy everyone in Jesus' name. Everything your people have asked for their personal lives, spiritual lives, professional lives, business life, family life, do something definite in Jesus' name. Clear all the cobwebs around us. Clear everything away in Jesus' name. All the paths of darkness debilitating against anyone will bring them under their feet. Powers of darkness under their feet. All the machinations of the devil, all the kind of uh, maybe thing of the devil, Lord, we pray that will bring them under their feet in Jesus' name. Every manipulation is destroyed. Every yoke is broken. Every curse is cancelled. And all the hurdles and the mountains before the people of God, one by one, take them away in Jesus' name. Clear the way for your people. The way to joy. The way to happiness. The way to fulfillment. The way to prosperity. The way to heal him. The way to turn is to strength. Clear the way before your people in Jesus' name. Wipe their tears away. Personal lives, wipe their tears away. In their families, wipe their tears away. In their business, wipe their tears away. At this time of famine and recession, let there be abundance. Let there be prosperity. Where the riches, their riches and their wealth are hidden. Open the lid. Open their ways. Let them see it and have it in Jesus' name. Fulfill the desires of their heart. Bring it to pass. This week, bring it to pass. This week, bring it to pass. And let them see the tangible answer to every prayer in their lives in Jesus' name. As they keep on doing good, do good in their lives. I pray, Lord, that everyone without exception will have testimony and will carry on in the joy of the Lord all the days of our lives. Confirm it in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I am blessed. I am blessed. What are you there? Your blessing will be permanent.